Hello everyone, this is Caleb Simpson here from ZeldaDungeon.net, and you are watching our video walkthrough for The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is the tenth chapter of the walkthrough, running about 50 minutes or so, and being broken up into six videos. It covers what a lot of fans consider to be the most frustrating dungeon in the game, the Lake Bent Temple. As soon as you enter this cave-like entrance, you'll see that there are two new enemies that may look familiar since they are returning from previous Zelda titles. The first is a Shell Blade, which is a clam-like enemy that tries to chomp at you. They defend pretty well against most of your attacks, so they can be pretty annoying once they corner you, so don't want to let that happen. And they're easily defeated by just getting close to them and using a stab to get past their initial defenses. After that, regular sword strikes will easily get in. So continue working your way up this cavern, and you'll see another new electric jellyfish type enemy called a Bari. We actually can't harm them at the moment until you get an item that you receive within this dungeon. So just swim past them for now. And for future reference, you can actually swim really fast by pressing A repeatedly while underwater. So. Do that whenever you're swimming to swim really fast. Once you emerge in this official uh, entrance room, you'll see a short scene showing off the room. Climb out of the water and you'll find that this room is filled with various colors of chew, which I will talk about in just a moment. There are two small chests in this room that you can open if you like. One of them contains more water bombs, in case you didn't bring very many of them, and the other has a bundle of arrows, which we will need here in just a moment. Throughout this dungeon, we will be fighting several different chews, actually, because uh, they are all over the place. And just make note of the fact that their various colors have different benefits if you put them in a jar. Currently, I have a jar filled with purple chew jelly, which I will drink to show off what it does, and it heals you either one heart or it damages you one heart, so it's pretty worthless. You should never actually grab some, unless you're writing a walkthrough, like me. <laughs> uh, there's also red chew jelly that will restore eight hearts, so that's quite a bit better. So you can grab that if you like. Um, I would recommend doing that. Climb up the stairs and you can jump off the ledge to grab onto the lever, which is just begging to be pulled, and this will open up the nearby gate, allowing us access to the next door. You want to climb up there, and here I'm just going to walk circles around the door there, uh, which will cause a chew to fall from the ceiling. Just make note of the fact that chews will fall from the ceiling, so they generally do it at set points, so here I knew there was going to be a blue chew here. You want to defeat it, and you can kill it, and you can also collect its chew jelly, which will restore all of your hearts. So it's like a blue potion, and it is the best out of the healing chews uh, of the regular type. So there's actually some better ones later on, but they're a lot more rare and stuff and harder to find. You want to enter the next doorway, and you'll find yourself in a large cavern. As soon as you take a step forward, you'll see a stalactite up ahead that breaks off and falls to the floor. Minda mentions that it's dangerous, and suggests that you break them all down using some brute force. This is the clue that we need to use these stalactites in order to get through this room. Because we got water bombs and arrows in the last room, we already have all the supplies we need, and they were kind of hinting at this. You want to combine regular bombs with arrows, you can also use water bombs, uh, to form bomb arrows, and shoot them at all the stalactites in the room to form platforms that we can also use to scale this other side of the room and get up into this new area. So as you do, you'll see that there's a new enemy in here called Helmosaurs, which are another returning enemy from previous Zelda titles, such as A Link to the Past. Uh, these things have metal armor, or rather, helmets, that protect most of their body, but their soft backside is vulnerable. It is possible to defeat them, but it's easier to do so when you're up, out in an open area where you can move around. I suggest just avoiding them for now and continuing our climb. Once you get up to the top left of the room, you'll find a ledge that has a chest containing more water bombs. Grab it if you like, and then you want to go ahead and enter the next door. Now those Helmosaurs, we will actually get an item in this dungeon that will make them very easy for us to vanquish later on, but like I say, right now you're probably just better off just running right past them. In this passageway, you'll see a cinema that showcases the river that is surrounding the central room that we will enter in just a moment. This river is flowing around this large outer area and has several bari in it. You'd think we'd find some way to change the flow of the water or jump in the water and follow it to new areas, but apparently it's just aesthetic because we will never enter that river throughout this dungeon. Aw, but it looks like a great place to find hidden treasure. Once you regain control of our hero, you can run forward and tackle a new enemy here called a Lizalfos. These enemies are fairly quick, and you need to defeat them quickly as well. Here I am using all three of the hidden skills we were capable of gathering thus far in order to defeat it. If you miss some of those, don't worry, you aren't required to have them at this point, but you will be able to grab them shortly after this dungeon. Feel free to check out our Howling Stone guide on, how to, on our website, and it'll have details on how to find the stones and what you need to do to get those hidden skills that you may have missed thus far. This next area is the main room of the dungeon, and it looks confusing already, doesn't it? It's kind of an ongoing theme in the Zelda series for the water dungeons to be confusing, is it not? For starters, you want to run down the steps straight ahead and work your way clockwise. I'm playing this on the Wii version of the game, so if you are playing this on the GameCube and are following along, just reverse my clockwise and west and east instructions, etc. Sorry for the confusion, but that's kind of just how it goes. Watch the map if it makes you feel dizzy. Uh, here you'll find a blue variety of attack type, which is the same as the others really. The best way to defeat them is to perform a shield attack, followed by a jump attack, or simply use the spin attack. Both of those are stronger attacks, which will kill them in one hit. Once you make it all the way clockwise around this room, you'll find a small chest containing a bundle of arrows. 
This dungeon is simply filled with chests containing numerical items like bombs and arrows, so we will be overflowing with them by the time this dungeon is over. From this lower south portion of the main room, you want to jump out and grab the lever that is in midair to pull the stairs around to this side. This will lead up to the upper north portion of the room. Because of the way the room is designed, this will allow us to access the rest of the upper level that was blocked off to us before. Once you get up here, you want to defeat any tektites that get in your way, and then head counterclockwise around this room until you get to a small jar that is wiggling. You want to pick it up or slash it with your sword to find Uku once again. This chicken-like character was found in other dungeons as well, if you knew where to look. She is looking for something, but she's rather vague about it. We will learn more about what she's looking for much later in the walkthrough, but it's not really important at this time. Because we are so friendly and inviting looking, she's going to follow us around, as long as she's looking for something, and she'll pretend to be an item. You can use her to temporarily teleport out of the dungeon anytime you want to get arrows, lantern oil, bombs, Kleenex, that sort of thing, and then you can return here to the dungeon and continue to progress forward. Next, you want to head clockwise and go to the complete opposite side of the room uh, to go to the east side. You want to pull the lever to make the stairs that lead down to the west. So if you look at the map, you'll see we're currently on the upper east level, and once we make these stairs pop over this way, we'll be able to access the lower west corner. So you want to take these stairs down, and then from here you want to go over to the to the right, and you'll see that there's a large chest that contains the dungeon map. Now the map for this dungeon can be very confusing since each room can have a ton of layers to it, from underwater to multiple levels above the water, you know, and some of these rooms are really tall and they have waterfalls and such, so it can be really confusing. With that in hand, you want to finally enter the lower west door, which leads us to this outer room we were just in, but this time we're taking the west bridge uh, on the lower level. So you'll see that in here there's another one of those helmosaurs, and I want to feed this one just to show how it can be done. As I said earlier, they have a soft backside which is vulnerable, so you just want to sneak behind them and smack them there. Because they flinch when you attack them from any other side, you can use this to your advantage in order to get behind them. Defeat it if you like, and then go ahead and enter the next door. In this next room, we need to start off by shooting the two stalactites with bomb arrows. Just be careful not to hit the chains, which can be pretty annoying. You can use Z while using bomb arrows in order to strafe back and forth and avoid hitting the chains. Once you've knocked those down, you want to head down to this little cave off to the side and follow the now very obvious path. We can't do anything with those hanging platforms at the moment, the ones we just saw, but we will be returning to this room later to use them. So just log those away in your memory for now. They're too far apart at this moment for us to jump across them, so just avoid them. Just don't bother trying to jump across them. Um, they kind of remind me of, like, chandeliers or upside-down candelabras. Anyways, once you get down across these vines, you'll come to a little platform followed by a geyser. If you shot down the stalactite, you'll be able to use the occasional platform that the geyser makes in order to get over to this other platform that has a large chest. Open it to get a small key. Yay! With that, we're done with everything we can do in this area, so we want to head back to the main room. So you can go back the way we came by going back across those vines, or you can take this other way, which may be considered a shortcut. I think technically it actually takes the same amount of time, so I think they both are like quite literally the same amount of seconds to go through, so I don't really think this is technically a shortcut. <laughs> this way is probably a little more dangerous because there's more tektites. Anyway, with that, you want to head back to the lower west bridge area, ignoring the helmosaur along the way. You want to return to the main room, with small key in hand. That's all the time I have for this video, join me for the next one, and we will continue our way through the Lake Bed Temple.